day with the man, the myth, the legend, Stokey Kennedy. Stokey Kennedy. Wear a lot of hats in the city. But you know recently he put on a new hat, mayoral candidate for Baltimore City. So let's just give us a little backdrop of what led you to that decision to put that hat on. Oh um, man, you know, I've been, I've been from Baltimore my entire life, man. Watching the city go through a crisis, man, for the last four and a half years, and we got about 1,707 murders. And I feel like, man, my experience can beat a lot of people's opinion. And I felt like back in the day, when I was on the other side of the track, I did some things that caused me to make some bad decisions. So now I wanted to find a way to rebuke that Secret time and find ways to get back to my city, but on a bigger playing field and have a message that everybody can relate to. Because you know, if you know how something works, you can fix it. If you don't know how it works, you can't fix it. So I think most of the problems that we have today, I can fix with a bunch of good, like-minded people who believe, you know, in continuity, who believe in unity, you know, and trying to develop a strategy to implement across the city that's going to give us hope. And prosperity, man, we can start saving lives and educating these young kids and give something to look forward to because now these kids are doing what they see. And what they see right now ain't good. So right now we got to get out of this crisis, you know, mobilize people in the community, uplift them, give them a platform, man, and speak positivity into existence and see what happens. All right, let them know where we at right now. So right now I'm doing a, mentor, a free mentorship program. It's called Mentor Summit for um, young males between the ages of 15. I'm sorry, 5 to 25, you know. And giving them some information, man, on how to deal with being bullied, criminal thinking, uh, anger management, and things like that. And hopefully, man, they can walk out here educated, you know, powerful than they were before they came in. Okay, and like you said, a lot of kids do what they see. Right. Now, what you doing, being a politician, you know a lot of politicians get a bad rap in our city. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'm going to cut you off. I'm, not a, I'm never going to be a politician even though the job is different call for that. I'm going to be a man of the people. And right now, when you politicize the job description, to me, that's when you be disconnected from the people that you work for. I just want to be able to work for the people of Baltimore and get them, you know, what they deserve. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people in Baltimore have been left behind. They're right hopeless. You got kids dealing with mental illness, illness that's not getting treatment. People that's desensitized, they're out here shooting and killing, and they're immune to the dangers that they face. And that a lot of people are being victimized because of that. So, I mean, I'm not too concerned about what people say. I'm more concerned about what I can do to help Baltimore. And if I can make change, that's what I want to do. If I can't make change and somebody else can, I'm going to try to support him or her. I just don't see that person right now who I think can leave Baltimore in a different direction without having these same old recycled ideas. Because if you think about it, for the last four or five years, dealing with some of the same people, we get the same result. And we're going to go in a different direction, we got to do something different. And I'm not saying that I'm going to be perfect. I'm going to do my best to make sure I represent people where they are and do my best to always put them first. And that's all I can do. All right, so what, what gives you this fearlessness? Because now the kids seeing somebody that's from where we from, you know, our skin color, what gave you the fairness to even put that hat on and take on this challenge? I mean, because, man, you know better, you do better. I mean, you know, I, I grew up out of a of my life. And as many people talk about us, no one's really talking to us. And I think I can understand, you know, the stigma that a lot of these kids, you know, are faced with. You know, it's like, you know, when you have been in a situation before, you should know how to deal with that. And I'm not fearless to the point where, though, I'm faithful. I'm faithful enough to know that if I do my own and I work with the right people and we come up with the best possible plan to help the people, it can work before, it can work again. We just gotta believe in each other, find someone they identify with, they relate to, they respect and they trust. And I'm willing to bet you the city will go in a different direction. Right now, I don't think they see people that they can relate to. So when you can't relate to somebody, you don't even pay any attention. I think my face on a different platform would get them hope. If I went through some things, my mom died at AIDS, if I went in my life, a lot of kids can relate to that. So if I went through some, tra some prob problematic issues and came out of prison after doing 12 years with my head on straight, then maybe they could do the same thing without going through what I went through. So my job is to sacrifice myself for things I've been through so nobody else can go through. And I don't mind sharing my story because I'm just like everyone else. The problem is, I'm open to the public. I mean, I've been in jail for 12 years, been home for 10, doing everything right, giving back to my community and other communities abroad. But more importantly, I'm trying to put the people first. So my heart in the right place, and when my actions catch up to my heart, that's the reality I'm never going to run from. 
Well, you know, I'm behind you. The whole, my whole platform it, behind you. Appreciate and you know, hopefully, you hopefully you, you are the next mayor. And you know, all we gotta do, man, is get these young kids engaged, man. Have a, a voice and let them know why we doing this. And once they get engaged, I don't think it, it's even a conversation about if it's a matter of when. Because I feel like there's enough people that I can relate to and I can get this message to you that will understand my position. I'm not doing this for no money. I'm not doing this for recognition. I'm not doing this to be another whoever. I'm going to be the first person that's stepping up for the city or one of the few people that's willing, that's willing to take and make those sacrifices to put on for the city, man. I'm okay with the results. Okay, so you know this is the way you at show, so where you at? just let just let us know where you see yourself at in the future, I next five my, years I or something father. like that. Honestly, man, I see myself as a su successful father and businessman, hopefully a husband. In the next five years, Baltimore, we we'll look back at Baltimore, it's making a historical turnaround. Where though the violence is at all time low, the education is at all time high, job creation, housing at all time high, bringing people back to Baltimore, instead of leaving Baltimore, and just being a happy citizen, man, looking back at the results, saying, you know what, we did it. Okay, you know, that's where it's at. Yeah, patience. 